Next, from Chicago, we attend a press conference on the different scams and fraud that are directed at consumers. Speakers include Attorney General Lisa Madigan and Todd Casso, the acting director for the Federal Trade Commission's Midwest Region Office. This runs about 40 minutes. My name is Todd Casso, and I'm the acting director of the Federal Trade Commission's Midwest Region Office in Chicago. Um, and standing behind me is an auspicious group of representatives from federal, state, and local agencies and organizations who have been great partners of the FTC for many years. So let me introduce them to you now. First is Illinois Attorney General Lisa Madigan, who of course needs no introduction in her own blue room. Um, next is Michael Bruning, who is the Director of Communications for the Better Business Bureau of Chicago and Northern Illinois. Our good friend Steve Burness, the President and CEO of the BBB, is out of town today, so we're delighted to have Michael uh, filling in for him. And next to Michael is Maria Guerra Lupasic, the Commissioner of the De Chicago Department of Business Affairs and Consumer Protection. And then last is Vic Demchenko, who is the Assistant Inspector in Charge of the Chicago Division of the U.S. Postal Inspection Service. So we're all here this morning to recognize National Consumer Protection Week and to talk to you about some of the top consumer scams that our various offices have seen over the last year. The agencies represented here this morning work together throughout the year to share information and to protect and educate consumers in Chicago and the rest of Illinois about the most prevalent scams targeting consumers in the area. One of the ways that we do that is through a press event like this one during National Consumer Protection Week, where we can highlight for all of you the top frauds that your readers and viewers need to watch out for. This morning, we're also reaching out to consumers directly through a consumer fair that's currently taking place on the main floor of this building. The consumer fair is being hosted by the Better Business Bureau, and it features all of the agencies represented here, as well as a number of others. So once we're done here, I'd invite you to go downstairs and get some pictures of the fair to talk to our representatives and the consumers who are participating. One of the things that we're distributing at the fair is a single page list uh, of how to contact each of our agencies about various types of consumer frauds. And there are copies of this list at the back of the room. So let me talk a bit about the top consumer complaint categories for the Federal Trade Commission in 2015. Last year, our top three complaint categories were debt collection, identity theft, and imposter scams. And it's on the latter two categories that I want to focus this morning. So with identity theft, I want to tell you about a new tool that the FTC has rolled out to help identity theft victims recover from the effects of having their identity stolen. In 2015, the FTC received more than 490,000 identity theft complaints. And that's a 47% increase over 2014 when we received nearly 333,000 such complaints. Part of the reason for the increase was a massive jump in reports of tax or wage-related identity theft, where a victim's information is used to obtain a tax refund or other tax benefit from the IRS. In 2015, 45.3% of the 490,000 identity theft complaints that we received related to tax or wage-related identity theft. That's up from only 32% of the lesser number of ID theft complaints that we received in 2014. From consumers in Illinois, the FTC received slightly over 20,000 identity theft complaints last year, and approximately half of those related to tax or wage-related ID theft. So the numbers are pretty staggering. In fact, the Justice Department estimated that in 2014 alone, there were 17.6 million identity theft victims in the U.S. So what are we doing about this substantial problem? For the last 15 years, the FTC has been helping ID theft victims by combining law enforcement actions with national consumer education campaigns and business guidance. Our new identitytheft.gov website is the next evolution in helping people report and recover from identity theft. So identitytheft.gov makes it easier for victims to report identity theft 
and to recover from it. When you use identitytheft.gov to report a problem, the site asks you specific questions about your situation, and then it uses the information that you provide to build your personal recovery plan rather than giving you only generic advice. So if as a consumer you create a secure personal account on identitytheft.gov, the site will enable you to get a personal recovery plan that's tailored to your individual ID theft situation. And currently, the site has a tailored plan of action for 31 distinct types of identity theft. The site also enables you to return any time to update and track your progress as you move through the recovery steps. And it also enables you to get customized, pre-filled letters and forms that you can use to send to the credit bureaus, businesses, debt collectors, and even the IRS. IdentityTheft.gov is also integrated with the FTC's consumer complaint gathering system. So when consumers use identitytheft.gov to report a problem, the site makes information about the crime available to hundreds of law enforcement organizations across the country through our Consumer Sentinel Complaint Database, which is a secure online database for law enforcement only. Identitytheft.gov is also available in Spanish. Spanish speakers will get their recovery plan and step-by-step -step guidance in their language. They'll also be able to read sample letters in Spanish and send pre-filled English translations of those letters to the companies they need to contact to resolve their identity theft issues. So that's identitytheft.gov. I would encourage you to check it out. It's a great new resource. Since the rollout of the enhanced website at the end of January, more than 40,000 consumers have already set up active accounts on the site. And during that time, nearly 5,000 consumers have used the site to generate an IRS identity theft affidavit, which is something that you need to provide to the IRS if you've been a victim of tax ID theft. The other thing I wanted to mention briefly this morning are imposter scams. And this category ranked third in 2015 in reported complaints behind only debt collection and ID theft. Last year, we received more than 350,000 complaints that fell into the imposter category. And that includes things like the grandparents scam, romance scams, and tech support scams. But by far the largest group of the imposter scams complaints relates to the IRS imposter scam, which accounted for nearly two-thirds of the imposter category. Now, I'm sure you're, most of you are familiar with these calls. Um, consumers get a message which indicates that it's the IRS that's calling them, um, that this is your final notice um, about a delinquent tax debt, and that the IRS will shortly be filing a lawsuit against you. Consumers are directed to call immediately for more information. Um, and we have an audio file of one of these messages um, that we're happy to provide to any of you if you're interested. Just um, give me your card afterwards and we can email you the audio file later today. These calls are so prevalent um, that even one of the attorneys in our Chicago office was affected by this scam. Our attorney's husband received a message indicating that he owed money to the IRS and that he call, had to call back immediately in order to avoid legal action. When he called back, the woman who answered the phone identified herself as an IRS agent, and she said that he owed several thousand dollars in back taxes. When he expressed an interest in resolving the problem, he was transferred to a supervisor. The supervisor told him to immediately go to his bank and withdraw the money necessary to repay the debt. He was told that he'd receive further instructions on what to do once he was at his bank. Now, when he continued to ask more questions, the supervisor eventually hung up on him. What consumers need to know here is that the IRS is never going to call you out of the blue about a delinquent tax debt. And they're also not going to leave a message threatening to sue you if you don't pay right away. That's not how the IRS operates. They're going to contact you in writing via US mail if they think that you owe something to them. The IRS is also not going to demand a specific form of payment. They're not going to tell you to go immediately to your bank and withdraw funds so that you can load the funds onto a prepaid debit card or transfer the funds through Western Union or MoneyGram money transfer. So what should consumers do if they get these calls? 
they should hang up without providing the caller with any information about themselves. And then they should complain about the call to the FTC and the Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration. They should also warn their friends and family, particularly their parents, about these calls so that none of the people they care about will fall for this scam. So with that, I'm going to turn things over to the FTC's great friend and partner, uh, Attorney General Lisa Madigan. I thought you were just going to keep going. You're doing a great job. So, you know, the first thing I want to say to all of you is you may not realize this, but every single day of every single week, uh, this group of people arrayed behind me uh, comes together as what we like to call the Chicago Fraud Task Force. Uh, the reality is that there are tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of scammers that operate throughout Chicago, the state of Illinois, the entire country, and the entire world. And it is an enormous amount of work for us to try to go after these folks. And because we know how successful they are, our real goal during National Consumer Protection Week is to let you know about the most prevalent scams that are operating so that you can protect yourself, you can protect your finances, you can protect your credit, and make sure that uh, the hard-earned money that you have earned and that you have saved is not going to a scam artist. So know that we are available and we are constantly in communication. Uh, one of the greatest partners that you know most people are unaware of but is very, very active here in the Chicago area, the postal inspectors, uh, they really do some of the best work when it comes to investigating and tracking these people down that for the most part, you know, we don't necessarily have state resources to do, uh, but they do some phenomenal work. But everybody here is an absolute critical partner in keeping people protected from scam artists. So we are your fraud fighters, and please use us as a resource. So as Todd was talking about, uh, you know, the FTC has great resources. The Better Business Bureau has great resources. The City of Chicago has great resources. The postal inspectors are doing great work and have resources. So get on our websites. But in addition to getting on our websites, I can tell you out of the Attorney General's office, we still employ human beings to answer our phones. And they can provide you with information and answers to your direct questions. People can even come into our office. As I was coming upstairs today, there were two people sitting at our table talking to a consumer advocate about a problem that they have. So we provide direct service. We provide direct answers. We want you to know the good, the bad, and the ugly about what's going on out there in the marketplace. So please call us specifically to address some of the largest consumer fraud complaint categories that we are currently seeing and we've been seeing over the past several years. We actually have a homeowner's helpline that people can call and talk to trained counselors. We have an identity theft hotline. You can call and talk to a trained counselor about how to recover from that mess. We have a student loan debt helpline. Call if you have a student loan and you're struggling. We provide all of these services to people because we know that the scam artists are well aware of the prevalence of people with these types of problems. Struggling homeowners, people who've become victims of identity theft, the nearly 40 million Americans who are struggling with their student loans. Those are target-rich groups of people for the scam artists. They know you're struggling, they know you don't necessarily know what to do, and they are out there alleging that they can provide you with help and information and they claim they're going to do it for free. The reality is it is going to cost you a lot of money if you turn to a scam artist as opposed to your fraud fighting team right here. So reach out to us in whatever way is most comfortable and at whatever point you need to. So my advice is always, you know, before you either give your money away or before you decide to enter a contract for something, you know, do a little bit of background work. Get on the internet. Talk to your friends and family. Uh, but most importantly, I would say talk to us. Uh, you can come in, you can talk to us on the phone, you can get on our websites, and we provide incredible information. On Monday, uh, I released the Attorney General's Office Top 10 List of Consumer Fraud Complaints from last year. Uh, we see very similar types of uh, complaints as the FTC does, as the Better Business Bureau does. Our number one complaint category remains the consumer debt, consumer credit category. People who are still struggling with their mortgages, people who are dealing with abusive debt collectors, people who are dealing with problems with their credit card company. 
Our number two consumer fraud complaint category remains identity theft. Uh, as Todd just went through with you, uh, identity theft is an enormous problem, whether it is sort of the IRS identity theft, someone else is filing taxes in your name, or if it's because of a data breach. Uh, we see a lot of individuals that are using somebody else's credit to open up utility accounts, to open up phone accounts, to do a lot of different things that really is, you know, indirectly using your good credit and your resources to get certain services that they want but they don't want to actually have to pay for or they can't get those services because their credit is bad. Our number three consumer fraud complaint category this year is telecommunications. Uh, people who are, you know, complaining and dealing with their cable company, satellite TV, phone service, repairs, uh, and cell phone issues. Um, the number four consumer fraud complaint category, which historically has always been in the top three to top five, home repair, home remodeling, home building. Uh, please, you have got to do your homework before you enter in a con into a contract to do that. Uh, Todd went over the phone scams that are so prevalent, people calling for a variety of reasons, right? They claim that uh, they're from the IRS and you owe them money or you're going to be investigated if you don't pay. You miss jury duty, you're going to be arrested. Your grandchild is in jail somewhere out of the country, you have to wire money immediately. Uh, please be where these are scams. Please, please, please let your older friends and relatives know about those scams. In addition, the tech scam, that there's some sort of virus on your computer, I can fix it, and you're the uh, older person who doesn't know how the computer works. Uh, but the real category that I've been focusing on uh, for over a year now has been our newest category, which is education. Again, 40 million Americans that hold over $1.2 trillion in outstanding student loan debt. Unfortunately, many of them, when they actually turn to the company that they're making their payments to, aren't getting the information about what they can do to either reduce those payments or to make them more affordable every month. And therefore, the scam artists have been very effective in going after them with ads claiming that there is free information and free services available. But what happens is once you talk to these folks, they demand a large upfront payment. Uh, the latest company that we sued, it was a six, seven hundred dollar upfront payment. We've seen as much as thousands of dollars. Here in Illinois, upfront payments for those types of services are illegal. So, please call the Attorney General's student loan hotline. We will provide you with information that you need to know about your options in terms of dealing with your student loan debt. Uh, with that, I want to say thank you to all of the fraud fighters for joining together every day of every week during the year to make sure that we're going after the bad guys, but we want to make sure that they don't go after you. So with that, let me turn it back to Todd, who's going to introduce the next person up at the podium. Thank you, Attorney General Madigan. And next we have Michael Bruning from the Better Business Bureau. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Michael Bruning. I'm the Director of Communications with the Better Business Bureau serving Chicago and Northern Illinois. Uh, pleasure to be here with these government agencies. While the Better Business Bureau is not a government agency, it is very interested in protecting consumers. Uh, we provide the means to give them information as well as the means to complain about things. We encourage people to go to our new homepage, which is ask.bbb.org, which is very consumer-friendly and consumer-oriented as the starting point for obtaining any information or making complaints. Uh, we've heard already, and we're going to hear, I'm sure, uh, more uh, examples about how uh, consumers have been taken advantage of by untrustworthy, unscrupulous businesses, people, and sometimes just plain old criminals. Uh, various forms of financial scams are five of the BBB's top ten scams of 2015. These include such things as credit card scams, lottery and prize scams, and collection scams. Um, downstairs at the Consumer Fair, as well as on our website, we have an information sheet about our top ten scams. Uh, we encourage consumers to go to our website, ask.bbb.org, to uh, find this and other information. Uh, now, rather than running through the problems people have, I'd like to put this on a little more positive slant, perhaps, and 
say that there are actions that consumers can take to avoid these problems and protect themselves. And I want to highlight these. Uh, our first suggestion, always to check out the business or organization you are uh, thinking of doing business with or you know, paying them money or giving any type of donation. Uh, you should check them out with a credible reference organization or resource, uh, BBB, Attorney General's Office, other organizations. Uh, we at the Better Business Bureau um, have business reviews uh, that along with customer comments on these business reviews that cover over 100,000 local businesses in the Northern Illinois area. Now our database also covers more than 4.5 million businesses in Canada, the United States, and Mexico. So this is an outstanding resource for people who want to make sure that to check out a business first and not be scammed or not be working with fraudsters. On our website there is also a feature called Scam Tracker that actually shows what type of scams are active in a specific area, not just Chicago, but across the United States. Now, uh, even if you don't check out a business first, there are a couple things that you should always do when working with any kind of a business. Uh, one of them is please get all the information written down and then read the information or the contract, especially read the fine print. There's a reason why the fine print is on there. You know, sometimes because of legal requirements, other times you know, they want to state things. But the fine print is important to understand because it's going to impact whatever agreement or document you happen to be signing or working through. Another point, never send money to obtain money. This is a classic scheme. Um, Oftentimes the promise of more money in exchange for a lesser amount is very uh, opportunistic, very inviting. The problem with that is when that original money may not be real. So you're not only going to be out the original money, you're going to be out whatever you think you're going to be getting or paying them. Final point is you have to trust your gut. We remind people that if it sounds too good to be true, it usually is. It's very unfortunate that scammers tend to prey on people who are looking for a way out of their troubles. Something comes along and says, you know, and they say, my God, this is exactly what I need. If that happens, be suspicious. And, and again, then go back to the first part. If somebody is making you an offer, check them out first. Read the contract. So those are some of our suggestions from the Better Business Bureau on how consumers can protect themselves. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. And next we have Commissioner Lupasek. Thank you, Todd, and thank you for all the agencies who are here. Uh, BACP strives to ensure a fair and vibrant marketplace for both businesses and consumers where the city of the uh, City of Chicago agency that does this. We license businesses, public vehicles, we provide business education and access to resources for businesses. We enforce the municipal code and importantly, we uh, protect consumers from fraud. Uh, to reduce consumer deception, we conduct annual investigations on tax preparers, immigration service providers, we do a back to school sting on school supplies, we go out and investigate sidewalk cafes, ballet companies, um, we investigate the um, Keep Chicago Renting Ordinance for tenants, uh, vacation rentals, and home repair fraud. Uh, today, that's exactly what I want to focus on is home repair fraud. Last year, uh, BACP received 149 home repair complaints, which resulted in 359 citations issued and 83 cease and desist orders. Uh, the department and I and the administration will not tolerate consumers being ripped off, which is why we work closely with other agencies to ensure that bad actors receive the fullest of enforcement. There are a few things that we want to make sure consumers know and to look out for to avoid being prey to these predators. First, 
anyone doing work in your home needs to have a home repair or general contractor's license. These licenses are issued by the City of Chicago. BACP issues the home repair license. The Department of Buildings issues the general contractor's license. Do not, as a consumer, be afraid to ask to see this license, and do not, as a consumer, be afraid to look through our data portal to ensure that that license is, in fact, active and valid. Uh, the business license is required to be on all of their business flyers, their advertisements, and any vehicle that they use for their business. Uh, they have to carry up to $300,000 of insurance, and it's your right as a consumer to see that insurance certificate. Always ask for detailed work estimates, and then ask for a receipt. The consumer has a right to obtain any copies of documents that they file. I encourage anyone to report any problems to BACP by calling 311 or filing a complaint through our website, cityofchicago.org uh, backslash BACP. 311 has the ability to interpret in more than 200 different languages. Uh, we want you to go ahead and visit our website to sign up for consumer alerts. We issue consumer alerts monthly. That website is uh, www.cityofchicago.org backslash BACP. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. And last, we have Vic Demchenko from the Postal Inspection Service. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, on behalf of the Inspection Service of Chicago Division, I'm honored and appreciative of the opportunity to speak at this event. I'd like to thank the FTC, the Illinois Atten Attorney General Madigan. Thank you for the comments and praise earlier. Um, the BBB and the Chicago Department of Business Affairs and Consumer Protection for partnering with our agency during National Consumer Protection Week. Um, most folks don't know what postal inspectors are. Um, and for those that don't, um, the inspection service is the law enforcement arm of the uh, Postal Service. Uh, we're responsible for enforcing more than 200 federal laws and investigations of crimes that may adversely affect or fraudulently use the mails, the postal system, or postal employees. Um, postal inspectors are federal law enforcement agents, first and foremost, and conduct investigations of crimes related to mail, such as mail fraud. Um, there, there, unfortunately, are countless con artists preying upon the elderly, and I'd like to speak briefly about some tips the inspection service can offer to caregivers who, get, who help take care of our loved ones. Um, there is a guide uh, in our, on our website, and it's part of the uh, information sheet that was provided. Uh, the website is www.postalinspectors um, at uh, uspis.gov. Uh, there's also another website called deliveringtrust.com, and uh, there are numerous pamphlets uh, that, that talk about in detail ways to protect yourself from becoming um, uh, falling prey to, to scam artists. Um, the inspection service uh, uses a two-prong two approach uh, in terms of dealing with mail fraud complaints that come into uh, the inspection service. Uh, we look at it in a global and holistic way. Um, we, we understand that we can't arrest our way out of these problems. Um, there's just too many bad guys and too many victims out there that, uh, that we can't uh, put everybody in jail and, and put cases over at the prosecutor's office. We understand that. Uh, but we do have some uh, law enforcement actions that we take. Uh, we have partnerships established with uh, the uh, province of Alberta, and we have a Chicago Postal Inspector assigned uh, to that working group. And what they do is they work to, to put together prosecutions um, of bad guys in Canada, and uh, we, we put together interviews and uh, put cases together for them um, up in Canada. Uh, we also have inspectors that are, are detailed in Jamaica and work with the Jamaican police to put together cases to prosecute uh, suspects in Jamaica as well. Um, we also use, we, we prosecute our complaints through um, the Illinois Attorney, uh, Illinois Attorney General's Office, the U.S. Attorney's Office, state and local prosecutors. Um, back when I used to work cases 15 years ago, um, I, I had the privilege of working with the Spanish National Police on uh, a sweepstakes fraud case, and I spent a month at the uh, embassy in, in Spain and uh, we put together a case with victims in the United States that were uh, enticed to provide, uh, they were encouraged to provide money for lotteries that, uh, that they thought that they'd won and, and obviously didn't. And um, the bad guys were in Spain, so I was able to do that. And uh, the point I'm trying to make is that the inspection service will go anywhere, will go global to go and try and solve problems. Um, now the other part of it is the holistic part that, that we look at as well too, and that comes through consumer education and, uh, and prevention. And as I mentioned earlier, we have several websites that you can go to, and um, we put a lot of effort into, into these websites. There's a lot of resources that 
uh, that folks can can look at and how to plan or protect themselves from from falling prey to victims and all different types of scams that there are out there, are out there. Um, recently on deliveringtrust.com um, we uh, we had uh, Barbara Eden Adam West and Julie Newmar um, part of my past and watching Bat Batman and um, and I dream a genie uh, but what they did is they, they were nice enough to put together public service announcements uh, they're about 30 seconds long but um, they, they really hit and reach the target audience that we want to try and get to and they're extremely well done um, also uh, we uh, at, at the inspection service here in the Chicago division we have uh, a radio show uh, that is on uh, every Wednesday at 12 o'clock it's on uh, AM 1280 WBIG and uh, I believe the Attorney General has been a guest on that radio show and it's an hour-long radio show and what we talk about are just different scams that uh, that there are out there and how to avoid becoming a victim of that scam um, so that that is uh, every week at uh, Wednesday at noon um, if you have uh, uh, if you have folks that have mail fraud complaints or if you have victims out there if if, if they need to report something to us to actively uh, look into or investigate um, they can report that uh, through www.postalinspectors.gov or the www.deliveringtrust.com. Thank you very much. Thanks, Vic. And uh, now we are, we're happy to, to try to answer any questions you have. The, the IRS imposter scam um, happens all year round. It's not limited to tax season. So we're finding that, that these calls that you owe back taxes, consumers are getting that all year round. And, and we've been getting approximately 20,000 complaints a month um, on that for the last several months. Um, in terms of avoiding tax identity theft, um, our advice is to file your tax return as early as possible um, before any sort of scammer can file a a fake tax return on your behalf um, to take it directly to the post office to mail it um, rather than than leaving it in your mailbox for your mailman to pick up um, and then if any sort of tax preparer that you use to check them out um, ahead of time I don't know if anybody else has advice they wanted to pass yes, along on that. I, I actually would thank you Todd so the city of Chicago uh, municipal code has an ordinance regulating tax preparers it requires disclosures for the consumer, it requires the consumer to obtain the amounts that they're going to be charged up front so that they're not charged any hidden fees. And in addition, um, they're uh, required to see a notice regarding rapid refunds. So basically, uh, we're trying to dissuade consumers from accepting these rapid refunds uh, from rogue tax, tax preparers letting them, telling them that their refund's going to take six months, four months, uh, so that they might as well take this money today. So our consumer disclosures are designed to prevent consumers from falling into those uh, scams from these rogue tax preparers in the city. So I do encourage everyone to look at our tax preparer, uh, our website. We have a know before you hire a tax preparer information pamphlet on our website. And in fact, it's downstairs uh, today uh, in our Consumer Protection Week uh, uh, table. And so that they can see what the protections that the city of Chicago offers for uh, when you're looking for hiring a particular tax preparer. Let me just add a few more things. So um, to start with, Unfortunately, uh, we have seen an explosion in terms of the number of false tax returns that are being filed. Uh, I think it's terrible advice to have to say to people, well, just file as soon as possible so someone doesn't file before you. But unfortunately, that is the best advice that we are getting both from the federal government as well as the state government at this point. They have both put in place um, you know, some ways of trying to detect if there is a false claim actually being filed. Uh, but you really have to be careful at this point. Uh, if you do have a problem, obviously you need to reach out to the IRS at the federal level or the Illinois Department of Revenue at the state level. Uh, it does take a number of months to have that resolved and ultimately get your refund. In terms of the refund anticipation scams that we have seen for many years, I think the best thing that people need to know is you are not going to actually get your refund any faster. What is really taking place is that you are taking out a very high-priced loan uh, on you know, the basis of the refund that's in 
anticipated to come to you. So you have to be very, very careful. If you need help in preparing your taxes, uh, there has long been a very, very good service uh, throughout the state of Illinois that if your income qualifies you, they will help you prepare your taxes for free so that you can avoid the scam artists that are out there trying to take advantage. Um, I don't know if this remains the case, but for a long time what we were seeing is people who qualified for an earned income tax credit were primarily the people that were going to take out these types of you know loans. And unfortunately, they were losing the vast majority of their earned income tax credit amount to these tax preparers. And so obviously, the earned income tax credit was never designed to go to tax preparers. The earned income tax credit was designed to make sure that people who were already, you know, in a financially precarious situation were able to actually have additional funds to pay for their housing and their food, shelter, clothing, uh, and those sorts of things. So again, uh, this is a very difficult area. It's an area that is changing rapidly. And so again, reach out to us. Uh, we have an enormous amount of information on our websites, in addition to which, if people have questions about any of the things that we've talked about, whether it's the IRS scam where someone's calling you, whether it's, you know, hey, I filed my taxes, but they told me they wouldn't accept them because someone's already filed them, or if you have questions about tax preparation services, please feel free to call the Attorney General's office. Our number is 312 uh, 814-3000. We will connect you with a human. A human will answer the phone if you call during the day, not if you call at 2 in the morning. But if you call during the day, a human will answer the phone. We will connect you with somebody who can answer your questions directly about this issue or any other consumer issue. You may have already answered this question. Um, I was going to ask, how do people know that someone has filed a tax return instead of the, the real person who's trying to file it? Is it you get yours back and it says something? That, that is right. If, if, if you file a tax return, you'll, you'll get a notice back from the IRS that a, a tax return has already been filed under that Social Security number. Other questions? While searching for the apprehension of these fraudulent contractors and carpenters that come from the, like, home advisor on the Internet, can we do better about subpoena get uh, information from the contractors and carpenters that were fraudulent because I couldn't get information from the home advisor because they're out of state. So I had to try and find information on these contractors that came and, you know, they fraudulently lied about their names and everything and I couldn't get their information because I couldn't get a subpoena from the home advisor to forward their information. So, so the gentleman's referring to getting a subpoena for um, internet sites that offer uh, home repair services and um, certainly the city doesn't have jurisdiction over uh, any kind of uh, subpoena power for uh, out of state or out of city uh, agencies. I don't know if there's a federal agency. Or Here, let me answer a question. So look, unfortunately it sounds as if you've been in a circumstance where somebody alleged that they were going to do home repair work for you. They probably took your money and didn't do the work, right? And so this is the painful example of why we say to people and why we come together and say please, please please, please, uh, you need to check out an organization that you may have found and appears to be legitimate on the internet, but truth be told, they're simply scam artists. And that's why we want you to reach out to the Attorney General's Office, the Better Business Bureau, the City of Chicago, to find out if we have complaints. Uh, once we start getting consumer fraud complaints, uh, we do have an ability to try to get information and try to track people down, but so often one of the problems that we see, particularly if it's, you know, in the aftermath of a, of a storm, some sort of a natural disaster, is you have a we refer to as storm chasers that come in, uh, you know, they say that they're going to provide you with whatever sorts of repair services you need. Ultimately, what they do is they take your money, they may never show up again to do any work, or they do show up and they do only shoddy work. And so, yes, we have an ability to try to find those people, but the reality is, as I've said before, most of the time if you've given folks money, uh, if they are not here and they're not well established, they are going to be difficult for us to track down. Uh, so again, the best thing we can do is encourage you to do the work up front so that you don't end up losing your money. But please feel free to talk with us. We can see if, uh, if there's anything we can do. You're watching the Illinois Channel, an independent nonprofit corporation form to provide gavel to gavel coverage of Illinois state government and other public affairs events taking place across Illinois. 